Section 9.1 Sequences. A sequence, k -k -k comma, a sequence can be thought of as a list of numbers written in a definite order, a1, comma, a2, comma, a3, and so forth, where a1 is the first term, a2 is the second term, and in general, a sub n is the nth term. A sum of infinitely many terms is called an infinite series, sum series, sequence commas. Okay. And we'll see more of that in the next section. Series play a fundamental role in both mathematics and science. Right now, we will deal exclusively with infinite sequences, and so each term a sub n will have a successor, a sub n plus 1. A sequence is a function of n, number of terms, whose domain is the set of positive integers with n being 1, 2, 3, and so forth. Write the first five terms of the sequence. Now remember, a sequence is a list of numbers separated by commas. So a sub n is 3 to the n. So 3 to the first is 3, 3 to the second, 3 to the third, 3 to the fourth, 3 to the fifth. A series is a sum. So this is the sum of the sequence. The sequence itself is the list of terms. If we look at a sub n being 2 over n factorial, that's 2 over 1 factorial, 2 over 2 factorial, 2 over 3 factorial, 2 over 4 factorial, 2 over 5 factorial. That is your sequence. Your series is your sum of the sequence. And notice here, you should know your factorials at least up to 6, really. 5 factorial is, well, 2 factorial is 2 times 1. 3 factorial is 3 times 2 factorial, so 3 times 2 times 1. 4 factorial is 4 times 3 factorial, so 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. 5 factorial is 5 times 4 factorial, 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. You need to know these. Take a moment and write down what you see here. Some sequences are arithmetic or geometric, or a part of them can be represented arithmetically or geometrically. Recall that there are formulas for the general terms of arithmetic and geometric sequences. An arithmetic sequence is defined by this equation, a sub n is a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d. In other words, the first term plus n minus 1 times d, where d is the common difference. So if my first term is 5 and my common difference is 1, then the next term would be 5 plus 1, 6. The next one would be 5 plus 1 plus 1, 7, and so forth. A geometric sequence is found by a sub n equals a sub 1 times r to the n minus 1. Again, R is my common ratio, where you divide the next term by the preceding term. Notice, again, like the arithmetic sequence, we have n minus 1. That's because for the first term, you don't need a common difference or a common ratio. But for each subsequent term, you do. And so that's why it's n minus 1, because you didn't need it for the first term. Write an expression for the nth term. If you will notice, look what appears to be happening here. Notice, it looks like the difference between these two is 5 and 5 and 5. So that is our common difference. So this is arithmetic. And when we have a common difference of 5, that means 5n is going to appear somewhere in our formula. So my general formula is a sub n equals a sub 1, the first a, plus n minus 1 times d. So my general formula is 3 plus n minus 1 times 5. Distribute the 5, combine similar terms, and here is the formula for my nth term of this series. In other words, what about the third term? 5 times 3 is 15 minus 2 is 13. And look at that. My third term is 13. Notice, to get to my second term, I'm adding one common difference. To get to my third term, a sub 3, I start at a sub 1 and add 3 minus 1, 2 
common differences. So if we look at this sequence, you can see the signs are alternating. So that means that we cannot be adding something to each term to get to the next one. We must be multiplying it. And you'll notice that we appear to be multiplying by negative three. So our common ratio is negative three, and we have a geometric sequence. And what this is going to mean is three to the n is gonna be somewhere out there in our formula. So a sub n is a sub one times r to the n minus one. Let's remember parentheses around that common ratio is a very important notation. And this is not negative 15 to the n minus one. I cannot multiply this by this. So I have a sub n equals five times negative three to the n minus one. Actually, you can do a little bit more with this. Notice that my even terms, my second term, my fourth term have a negative sign. So I could write this as five times. Let's bring that negative one and the even terms are going to be negative. So if I look at n minus one, two minus one is one, negative one to the one would give me that negative sign and then three to the n minus one. So that might be a way I want to write this sequence. Okay, take a moment to write down what you have here. Okay, next, let's look at this one. It appears, can I find a relationship between these numbers and the position that each of them is in the sequence? Well, this is the fifth term and it kind of looks like five squared. So this is the fourth term, it's four squared. This is the third term, it's three squared. So I can conclude that my equation for my sequence is n squared. Now, what do I have here? I have a lot of even numbers. Okay, this is where n is one. This is where n is two, my second term. This is where n is three. This is where n is four. Maybe I can make a relationship between these and the number they are. Let me see. Uh, huh, three to the fourth is 81, and this is one more than 81. Okay, three to the third is 27, and this is one more than that. Three squared is nine, this is one more than that. Okay, there it is. We have found our expression for the sequence. Three to the n, add one. Sometimes we combine different things. Notice that my numerator, it looks like two, three, four, five, six. This is my first term. This is my second term, my third term. So it looks like my top is n plus one, but let's look at the bottom. These are all odds. The way we get an odd number in a sequence is we either take two n plus one or two n minus one. So if n is one, this would be two times one minus one. This would be two times two minus one. This would be two times three minus one. So it looks like the bottom is two n minus one. Okay, take a moment to write down what you see. I hate to use the word tricks, but there are some tricks with finding various sequences. Notice that these are odd. So, 2n minus 1. The first term is 1. The second term is 3. So 2 times 2 minus 1. Notice these appear to be, these are evens, but this looks like 4 times 3. Let me see. This looks like, oh, these are my factorials. 1 factorial, 2 factorial, 3 factorial, 4 factorial. These appear to be squares. What about this one? Looks like I'm multiplying by two. Oh, that's gonna be two to the, now two to the, my first term is one. So two to the n minus one would give me two to the first term minus one is zero, which would give me one. This is my second term. So my first term, let's see if this pattern fits. Two to the one minus one is two to the zero, which is one. My second term, two to the two minus one is one, two to the one is two. 
my third term, 2 to the 3 minus 1 is 2 squared, which is 4. All right, that worked. All right, let's look at this one. I have alternating signs, so my R needs to be negative. My numerator looks like it is factorials, and my denominator looks like it is n plus 1. There you go. Notice that the odd terms are the negative ones, and so what we did is took the factor of negative 1 to the n times n factorial. Now, what's going on here? Again, I can see I'm going to have a negative 1 to the n. Notice that the bottom looks like n times n plus 1. That's my first term. My second term, n times n plus 1, and there you go. The definition of a limit of a sequence. A sequence, a sub n, has a limit L. If the limit as n goes to infinity, the number of terms goes to infinity of our sequence is approaches some value L. Or if a sub n approaches L as n to, goes to infinity, same thing. If the limit exists, the sequence converges. If the limit does not exist, the sequence diverges. Make those corrections in your notes if I didn't make them already. More specifically, let f be a function of n is a sub n, my general term for my sequence. The following possibilities arise. If the limit as n goes to infinity of my sequence is infinity, then f of n diverges to infinity. If the limit as n goes to infinity of a sub n is negative infinity, then my sequence diverges to negative infinity. That means the nth term is getting larger and larger in the negative direction. If the limit as n goes to infinity of a sub n is c, a finite real number, then my sequence converges to that c. In other words, my nth term gets closer and closer and converges to that number c. If the limit as n goes to infinity of a sub n oscillates between two numbers, then we diverge by oscillation. Since sequences are functions, it makes sense to talk about the graph of a sequence. Using your graphing calculator, determine whether the following sequences converge or diverge. Look at both the graph of the sequence and the table of the y values as n increases. So first, we have to go to our mode, and we want to change it to sequence. Hit it twice. Now I can go to my y equals and I can enter in what my sequence is. For instance, if I looked at 2n minus 1, oh, I have to do alpha n in my list there, and my first example up there above at the top of the page, n was 1. Let's look at my graph. I want to, let's start it, let it change by 1. Let's let my x minimum be negative 1, so I see the y-axis. Let's let my y in minimum be negative 1, so I see the x-axis. And let's look at what this looks like. Look at those points. See? So when n was 1, my y value was 1. When n was 2, my y value was 3. When n was 3, my y value was 5, and so forth. So you can work with sequences on your calculator. The factorial key, if we do green diamond, divide. So 5, green diamond divide, 5 factorial, we know is 120. Okay. If I do green diamond EE, -E, I get my list of what the green diamond key will give us. There is my factorial right there with 5. Okay, so what we're going to do is determine if these converge or diverge as n goes to infinity. Well, what do you see here? What's going on here? Think about your exponent rules from section 3.5 when we did the limit as n goes to infinity. What's that going to get very, very close to? Well, it looks like as n gets really bigger, I have a rational function here. Degree is equal. It's going to go to 1. Now, I could use my calculator to check that out. What about this one? I'm going to get 1 half, 1 fourth, 1 eighth. What does it look like it's getting closer to as n goes to infinity? Looks like it's going to converge to 0. What's going to happen with these? Well, let's see. When n is 1, I'm going to get 3 minus 1, which is 2. When n is 2, that's going to be a plus 1. I'm going to get 3 plus 1. 
when n is 3. So odd exponents are going to subtract 1 from 3. Even exponents are going to add 1 to 3. This is diverges by oscillation. And what about this one? Okay, as n goes to infinity, my degree is the same, right? So it looks like negative 1 half. And what's going to happen with this one? Hmm. Well, as n goes to infinity, natural log just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger over n. So give this one a shot with your calculator. See if you get this, because that's what it should do. We're going to have something interesting with this on the next page. Now, as part of your TPs, you're going to do the rest of this page. So we're going to determine whether the following sequences converge or diverge, use our limit rules as n goes to infinity. We can see, here's the pattern for my sequence. We know that's going to take the limit as n goes to infinity of n over n plus 1. What's that going to be? It's going to converge to 1. Again, the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 over 2 to the n. What's that one going to do? It's going to converge to 0. So we have done these two. And we could write this as 1 half to the n, but it's going to converge to 0. You're going to do the rest of these as part of your TPs. Look at page 597 for an example of how the squeeze theorem can be applied to sequences. Also note the conclusion in the margin in that, that the factorial function increases more rapidly than the exponential function. Here is the squeeze theorem for sequences. The limit as n goes to infinity of a sequence is L, which also is equal to the limit of another sequence as n goes to infinity, then there exists an integer n such that the sequence c sub n for all n greater than n is also equal to that l. So we have this. And if you look at this example, you can see, I would like for you to read it, how this is used. Very important to read through this. Very, very important for things coming up. Now we have to talk about two special types of sequences. A sequence is monotonic if its terms are non-decreasing. In other words, a the first term less than or equal to the second term, less than or equal to the third term, or if it's non-increasing, the first term greater than or equal to the second, greater than or equal to the third. Also some other vocabulary, a bounded sequence, a sequence f of n equals a sub n is bounded above if there is a real number m such that a sub n is less than that m for all n. m is called the upper bound. Likewise, it's bounded below our sequence if there is a real number n such that our sequence is greater than or equal to n for all n. We call that a lower bound. A sequence is bounded if it is bounded above and bounded below. So we're going to determine whether the sequence with the given nth term is monotonic, discuss the boundlessness. All right. As n gets bigger, I'm starting with 5. n is 1, so my first term is 6. My next term is 5 plus 1 half, 5 and a half, and so forth. So this is monotonic because each term is decreasing a little bit than the one before. So it is bounded. Notice, we are never actually going to get to 5 because we're adding 1 over something. This is never quite 0. Close to 0, but never quite 0. All right, this one. What do we know about cosine? Cosine is always between negative 1 and 1 inclusive. So as n, remember this is not n times pi. This is n. n is 1, n is 2, n is 3. So we have to do this on the calculator to get an idea of what's going on. We get these values. Again, make sure you are in radians. Notice that this is not monotonic. We are not, notice, 5, then negative 0.2, negative 0.3, then negative 0.1, which is greater than this. So it is not monotonic, but it is bounded because my sequence has to always be between negative 1 and 1. General note, the factorial function increases more rapidly than the exponential function does. 
That is really important. So your TPs for this section are lecture manual page 88, numbers 6 through 10. You're going to finish those. And then page 89, numbers 3 through 7.